Yo everyone, what's going on? Jim for 123 here. N nobody's gonna get that reference. But anyway, today I'm going to be speedrunning the Minecraft Seed 69. What? But the video title said you were speedrunning the Seed E! Yeah, well I was originally going to do the Seed E, but when I was looking through the Seed, I discovered this. So it turns out that the seed E is the same seed as the seed 69. Once I saw that, I knew I had to speedrun it. And I ended up getting a really good time on it as well. And without any further ado, here is the run. Alright, well let's look at this run. Uh, we start off, I delete the last world I made, put in the seed, and um, starting up the world. So, uh... Some general things to know about this run is that the the starting overworld, it is terrible. There's no villages, there's no oceans, there's nothing that you can use anywhere. But there is one thing which I do use. Uh, there's no way you could use this if it was like a random seed, but as a set seed it works perfectly. So the nether, the nether is actually pretty good for this world. The blind travel is terrible, I have to move a little while, but let, let's start with the overworld. So right now I'm just crafting my wooden pickaxe. I'm gonna get some stone from the mountain. I did a little bit of maneuvering back there. That was kind of hard to do perfectly. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna craft a an axe, a pickaxe, and then a shovel, which is just the essentials. And I'm actually going to use the axe right now because I have to get a lot of wood. Because I ended up having to do some bridging and then I have to use it to craft beds since the cool, there's a cool thing about the blind travel, which is just where I make my portal to leave the nether, and you'll you'll see why I need all the wood, but right now I'm just chopping down some trees, making sure that I have enough. I usually get about a stack and a little bit more wood. So the thing is, most speedrunners would around this time probably be looking for a lava pool, but I'm actually not going to use a lava pool since there's basically none anywhere near. I'm actually going to start digging down and then go to a lava pool from a cave, and... Well first, I actually have to go somewhere else underground, and the cool thing about this is that I, I, I've never seen any speedrunners do this. Uh, I think Ben X did it once in the Mr. Beast video, but I've never seen anyone else do it here. So I'm, I'm just gonna speed this part up. It's just digging down, nothing interesting. Bam! That chest, that chest right there. Four iron and a pickaxe, an iron pickaxe. That is a speedrunner's dream. If you don't know, seven iron is exactly the amount you need to make an iron pickaxe, a bucket, and a flint and steel. So when I saw that chest, I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. Right now I'm getting flint, but I thought this, this, this is perfect. This is the best chest a speedrunner could wish for. It has everything you need to go to the nether. So right now I'm grabbing some water. There's actually some diamonds back there, but I don't grab them since it's, it would actually be faster not to grab the diamonds. I don't, I don't need them. I can mine iron blocks with, a, with an iron pickaxe. I don't need to make like any tools, any armor, I don't need it. So I just, I just skipped them. Plus it was underwater, so it wouldn't have been hard to grab. Uh, right now I'm making my portal. I'm gonna craft some bowls for food. Food, food is the biggest issue because since there's no villages and no oceans, I can't get food from a village or like a like a shipwreck. There's no animals around. So what I, what I have to do is I actually have to make mushroom stoop. And I can't even make suspicious stoop since there's no flowers and you need flowers to make that. But right now I'm, I'm actually heading to the bastion. And the thing about that is I can get pearls, uh, string, and also obsidian. Those are the three things that I need. But the Bastion, you can actually see it in like the top right right now, to, to the right. But I'm, but I'm going to the left first. This is the slowest part of the run because I have to grab mushrooms because I need to make mushroom soup. And it would be so much faster if I could find food other ways, but, but there's just no other ways that I found. This is the fastest way to make a huge inconvenience to grab the mushrooms. But mushrooms definitely come in handy because there's so many times when I have to eat food and heal. So right now I'm heading back to the uh, to the bastion, but before I go, I'm actually gonna have to go to the left here. I'm gonna bridge across the ravine, as you can see, pull off the speed bridge, and that's because I need red mushrooms for the mushroom stew as well. So this is probably like a one, probably a one minute time loss. It could have been a little faster if there was food other ways. Right now I see a piglin. I would normally craft my mushroom stew right there, but I wanted to get to the bastion as fast as possible. So what I'm doing right now is, 
I'm actually going to use a route called Manhunt Route, which is where you break the, that chest there, and then you anger a bunch of piglins, and you get them to follow you, which uh, there's a lot of them following me right now. And then I, uh, I loot this chest while they can't touch me because I placed the block. And then once I mine that block, they can all come towards me, so I have to block myself off before they get to me. And then right now, they'll all jump down the hole because they're mad at me, and then it's perfect because I can trade gold with them, and this is exactly where the gold is in the Bastion, so so this is great. So I can just mine the gold and let the pig piglins trade. Uh, I'm, I'm eating my mushroom stew right now because I'm kind of low. I only have one left, but I should be able to get it out of the Bastion before I need to eat more than one more. Uh, th the type of Bastion that this is, it's called Housing, which is actually considered one of the best Bastions for speedrunning because it's consistent, there's always the same amount of gold. I personally don't really like Housing, but it's the one that was in this run, so I ended up using it. So. I'm giving all the gold to the piglins, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna actually put down some fire and burn all the items I don't need because inventory management is actually really important in speedrunning. Uh, I'm sort of OCD, so it really bothers me when my inventory is not organized. Uh, so what I want is, uh, I want string, I want obsidian, I already have a lot of string and obsidian right now, so that's good. Uh, I need 60 string, I believe, I have 44, so I only need about one or two more trades. Uh, I see that I have my inventory managed, so I go to see what the piglins traded me. I have a bunch of pearls, I have a bunch of string, so I can actually leave right now because I have everything. So I'm going to organize my inventory one more time, and then I'm just going to leave the bastion because I have fire res, fire res pots, that's another thing you need. It's really useful when you're killing blazes. Uh, I see pearls, I grab them because why not, and I'm leaving. That's one of my fastest bastions on this road, actually, so... I'm pretty happy about that, and I grab more red mushrooms here, I have plenty of brown mushrooms, I grabbed all the ones I'm going to need at the beginning, so now I can make more stew, which is good. I just realized I never even ate that one stew that I had, apparently I didn't need it, I did the bastion so fast, but it worked out. So I have plenty of pearls, so I can use the pearls for maneuvering instead of uh, using them to ignite the end portal. And look at that, there's a, for there's a fortress right next to the bastion, that's what I love about this seed. When I was originally routing the seed, I actually located a fortress and saw one that was really far away, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is horrible. But then, I think the weird thing about locating fortresses is that it shows you a specific part of the fortress, and fortresses can be like 400 blocks wide, so you can be like right on top of the fortress, located it, but it locates to a specific part of the fortress, so that's kind of annoying. But I was, I was routing it, I saw this, I was like, hey! The fortress is a lot closer, so I was excited about that. So, right now I'm killing blazes. I don't really get that good drop rates. It's a 50% chance to get a blaze rod. I don't get any in the first three tries. But check this out. I'm going up here, and this is another cool thing about the fortress. It is a double spawner. There's another blaze spawner right there. I can just, like, go between the two. It's awesome. It's a lot faster, but the first four blazes I kill, I actually don't get a blaze rod, which is kind of annoying. And there's mushrooms here, so I can get even more food. Uh, I hear Blazes is downstairs, I think. Uh, yeah. I go to kill it. Uh, do I get my first blaze rod here? Yeah, I do. I finally get a blaze rod. Uh, I need six blaze rods. I believe the portal is a one eye, so I can't skip the last one, so I'm gonna have to get six, uh, rods. But we get a spawn here, which is good. I think I do get at least one from here, yeah. Uh, I have two right now, three right now, so that's good. If, like, a good amount spawn right here, I could be leaving. But I don't think that happens. Um, I'm mining out some of the blocks. Oh, I get a spawn, yeah. I was mining out the blocks, because that makes the blaze blazes spawn faster. Uh, I don't think it really helped. It might have, I'm not sure. Uh... Okay, yeah, I'm mining out more blocks. The good thing about this is it gives you blocks that you can use later. So, that's good. I grab another mushroom for food, because I ran out of food a lot while I'm doing this run, so I wanted to make sure I had enough. Continue mining out, and I get another spawn, okay. So if both of these drop, I think I can leave. So I'm really hoping that this guy drops, and he does! Oh my gosh, I, don't, I didn't even remember that. So I can leave, I can leave the fortress right now. That was 
It wasn't my quickest, but it was one of my more faster ones, and uh, I'm organizing my inventory, I make sure I have everything I need, and I'm done with the nether. All I need to do now is leave the nether. I have 12 obsidian, I can build a portal, but I have to travel, I think, like 700 blocks, because I want to leave... I want to leave the nether in a place that'll put me, like, really close to the stronghold. That's called the blind travel, and it's not exactly blind when you're in a set seed because you know exactly where the stronghold is, but I'm just going to call it the blind travel. So, I have to run through a soul sand delta, which is annoying because there's skeletons, soul sand, uh, oh, there's a gas tier, yeah. So, I'm really annoyed by this gas. I'm hoping he'll shoot one. He does, but I'm not able to get him, so I just run up to him, um... Kill him with the axe, that worked out good. So, I actually use my pearls to get around the uh, Soul Sand Valley a lot because it's faster than running, obviously, and I have enough to spare. I have to throw a very precise pearl to get down here, and I'm gonna build my portal right here. This is exactly where I want it to be. So, I have enough to spare. I don't have to, I can put some of the corners, I don't. And then, okay, yeah, right here, I'm going to go into my video settings and turn down my render distance. All I was trying to do was reduce lag when I went through, because that happened a lot. It didn't really work. Also, in the top left, you'll see the uh, the real-time timer to the left and the in-game timer. The in-game timer pauses, and it doesn't count the time whenever, like, you're in the menu or changing video settings, and whenever you're loading, like, whenever you go through a portal, so... You'll see that again when I go through the end portal, but... But what about that blind? I went directly into the stronghold and directly into the end portal, so th that was incredible. I just, I was really happy that I was able to do that whenever I was routing the seeds. So I'm, I'm in the end, all I have to do is kill the dragon, and I'm gonna do something called one cycling. Oh, I gotta turn up my render distance, but one cycling is you craft uh, at least four beds, and then we wait till the dragon perches, and when, when he does, Whenever the head is above the, the pillar, you place a bed and then you explode it. So, you can kill the dragon using only four beds using this strategy. And it's the fastest way that anyone's figured out how to kill the dragon right now. So, I can actually make beds because I have string and I can craft wool out of them. So, that's really nice. And I have uh, 60 string, which means I can make five beds. Uh, I believe I craft them right here. Yeah, okay. Okay, so yeah, I'm crafting the beds. Uh, I make five beds. I really do need five because I haven't practiced one cycling that much, and it's pretty hard to do it with four beds, so I'm not able to do that yet, but I can do it with five. I've practiced enough, so right now all I'm doing is I'm waiting for the dragon to perch. Uh, I think I actually get a pretty fast perch. Uh, I'm organizing my inventory. Uh, I'm pillaring up. The higher you pillar, it makes dragon perch faster and here it is here's the perch so i see he goes to the left i go to the left okay so i place one bed the first bed was not good the second bed was okay third bed that was good the fourth bed dealt a lot of damage the fifth one oh. and i don't have any more beds so I, I can't i can't use any more beds to kill him so i have to hope that i can deal enough damage with my axe when and he's being healed but i but i get it and i'm able to do it I am kind of sad that I wasn't able to 5-bed, but I was able to kill the dragon anyway, so I'm, I'm happy with the run. And you can see there, I got a time of 12.30, so that's that's sub-13, less than 13 minutes, and my original goal for the seed was actually to do it in less than 20 minutes, and then I changed that to 18, so I, I am incredibly happy with this time. I was really glad that I was able to do it this fast, so that was really good. Alright everyone, thank you for watching, and if you're new here to the channel, make sure to subscribe, as it's the easiest way to show your appreciation to the channel. I've actually been getting into speedrunning a lot lately, so if you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure to tell me so down below in the comments. And with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.